share your experience in aviation, your story? Well, my story is, uh, well, probably I can write a book with a story because the, uh, it, it was, a, it is a story that started in South America, flying basically in Peru, where uh, there were uh, some opportunities in the past. So that is why I started to fly there. Uh, I flew uh, almost all the Cessnas, Beechcraft, uh, Pipers and uh, any airplane, uh, Islander, any airplane that you can imagine in a big aero taxi company there from charters and flew like probably around uh, seven years or eight years uh, uh, mountain operation and icing condition etc and from there I had the opportunity to go into the uh, major airline there flying first as a flying engineer so I worked as flying engineer in the 727 then went into the 727 as first officer 737 as captain then 757 767 as first officer then as captain and 320 and I flew the 320 in uh, Latin America, well, actually all America, from Canada to Argentina. Then I flew uh, for a short period of time also in Indonesia. And then I became uh, instructor and examiner in, in the UK. So I changed and moved around and then ended up in the UK uh, doing my training, my license, getting the examiner in, in, and instructor ratings from the 320. Uh, and then I went into Welling uh, to become the uh, head of training. So I was involved in the recruitment of pilots and training of pilots and flight attendants for six years. And then uh, I came to this company, which is Bolotea. In all that period, I helped to develop four new projects. And uh, my hobby was to get some uh, ratings and studies. So in the same time, I was studying at the university and got a degree and three master degree and I'm now involved in a doctoral process also so yeah I always involved in aviation and in management yes uh, what would be your advice for a person looking for a job because we see this your very successful unbelievable career what would you advise for the young pilots uh, well if you don't have a tie rating I would advise them to look for the website of Baltica which is something uh, very useful for pilots because you can get a lot of information on the type ratings, line training and everything that you can get which is something completely new for, uh, for Spain uh, uh, it gives you a door, an open door to a, and a broad opportunity of things uh, out of uh, Spain that uh, do not exist now so my advice will be just to contact uh, your organization which I think is one of the most professional I have seen and uh, look for advice on the future possibilities. Uh, I know that your organization has uh, many contacts that can help, uh, even myself in the South of Europe and some other pilot with experience around the world. So I think that, will, that could be a, a good move for a young pilot uh, to get a good advice. Uh, he, uh, if he wants to get a job, I think it's important to get the right type rating. It is very expensive, everything now, unfortunately, for pilots. So you have to be careful on where you invest your money and what type of airplane you invest your money. So you need to get the, the, the right and the correct advice. Uh, not just going you know, to the forums and internet because there are many, many information that is not good. Uh, you, go, you have to go to the right persons. Uh, so that will be my advice. If you manage to get in, in the interview, job interview, how to succeed there? Well, it, it is... It is not a, you know, a straight answer because it will depend on the airline you are applying to. Uh, for example, in Spain, uh, we normally do a, a list of exams, all the, uh, the airlines, like uh, for instance, psychometric and uh, aviation knowledge, etc. Some of the airlines, uh, like Vueling and Volotea, you need to go through a screening in a simulator. And, uh, some of them are only interview process, like for instance Singapore Airlines, that we see a big airline, they only do a, an interview and they put you into a simulator or that was some time ago, but that was the process you had to go. So it depends on the airline. If you go to Emirates, I know that it's like three days, very complex uh, a process, so you have to be prepared for that. So uh, my advice would be to ask uh, people who have been uh, through that airline, a specific airline, first ask the airline to see if they can provide you with information. You are going to take this and this exam. So at least you know and you can prepare yourself. And uh, if you cannot get, get this information, at least try to contact pilots that have been through the process and ask them about uh, what to be uh, uh, 
what should you prepare for the interview, no? but uh, in general, my advice will be to be prepared for everything. That means uh, study all the time, not, all, not only when you are going to do an interview. A pilot should study always, uh, so that way you will be prepared. Uh, you need to have a standard level of English. If you don't have at least a standard level of English, don't go. Just prepare yourself first and then go and take the, uh, the interview. Never go to an interview if you are not prepared, because that's an uh, opportunity that maybe will be closed for the next time. No? Just take the interview because of that, that will probably close you the door in the future for that airline. So just go when you are prepared. From your uh, work, six years in Vueling, uh, in hiring, uh, do you remember at least one case uh, when personality paid a lot? And uh, you uh, cho chose the person uh, maybe with the same skills and English level, uh, but uh, with the personality issues. There are many personalities. Uh, I remember in 2007 that we need uh, approximately 100 pilots because we were growing very, very fast. And we interviewed during the year 1,000 uh, applicants. It was a, probably the record. So we received uh, applications from all around Europe and we interviewed many people with different personalities. Mm -hmm. And of course, sometimes you see some personalities which are, you see, uh, you say, okay, well, this personality is pretty good for us. Uh, the problem is that you need to be good in all the uh, stages of the interview process. I mean, of the application process, because it's not good if you only have a personality, a good personality, but uh, at the same time your English is low, or your aviation skills are not good, or your knowledge is not correct. You have to be, I think, standard in everything, uh, instead of being just above a standard in some of the things and below a standard on the others. And what's the standard for the personality? Well, it depends on the airline. Uh, we normally do uh, in our airline a uh, a kind of a screening process. It's like a survey for the pilots who are in the company that we think are the best pilots for us in terms of attitude and everything. So we, what we did in the past was to give them a survey so they uh, take a lot of questions, uh, answers, and then after that we said, okay, this is the uh, attitude that we need for a pilot. So. Uh, you usually uh, use the help of professionals in this, psychologists or the human resource department, depending on the size of your airline, and they should uh, do like a profile where all pilots should be in. So then you uh, go to the pilots and uh, ask them the questions, and they, there should be between these boundaries of what you think is a standard attitude for you. So there will be airlines, uh, probably in some part of Asia, that you need a more, let's say, military uh, attitude. Uh, you know, airlines where the pilot must do exactly what the airline says and you have the boundaries very, you know, uh, narrow. And there are some other airlines with more, uh, you know, wider uh, boundaries. Uh, so it will depend on the airline. It will depend on the airline. For instance, for a low-cost company, as the one that I used to fly for the last uh, years, it is important that you have an attitude of a pilot who wants to help the airline to succeed. So you cannot have a pilot from the old school that just want uh, to do his job and then go home and that's it. I don't care about the airline. I just want them to pay me this and that. So that type of attitude is not good for low cost. So for a low cost will be an attitude of, okay, what is happening? I will call my uh, boss to tell him, I suggest we change this because we are delaying on this on those flights. Uh, we are having problems with the fuel on this. Uh, why don't we do this on that? So that type of attitude is the one we look for in this type of airlines. Okay, great. So wish you the best candidates. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Bye.